Um, with my stamp here, the Fruitful Harvest, I just left them on the backings and just cut them all apart. It's just easier for me than having to pull them off and then stick them back on a thin mount and then put them on here. But, and then as you know, if you watched me last week, I keep it all in one of those envelopes that Iron Orchid Designs has. You can order. Um, okay, so here's my black, my blank canvas. I'm going to see if I can zoom out a little bit. Let me see. Uh, there we go. Um, so let me tighten this up. Oops, wrong direction. Righty tighty, right? <laughs> All right, there we go. Now this is a uh, mustard yellow type color sweatshirt and it's kind of like the shirt I have on today. Um, now we're going to stamp on here. I tried different colors on different color shirts and I really like white on this mustard color. However, I, I'm not really happy with the uh, the way the mixing white comes on this. I've even tried white chalk paint and it just doesn't look right. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use stone, I think. I might use black, let me show you the difference. So here's the black, it's really dark. And then the stone. So one's more brown and one's black. I'm thinking I'm gonna do um, the, let's do the black, just so it shows up well. Now, when you're stamping on fabric, I always recommend using a brayer because you get a little bit more ink and you want a little bit more ink when you're doing this because you want, it's going to soak through the fabric. Um, another tip you want to always keep handy wipes around because sometimes when you touch your bottles, there's a little bit of ink residue left over that might be a little sticky and I definitely don't want to get on the sweatshirt. So we're going to do this mustard color shirt, uh, sweatshirt. And then um, I have a wet one. So we're going to play with different colors. We're going to start here with the basic of just the dark color, and then we're going to go and move on. Now, there are so many different um, fall sayings you can do. Um, I'm sticking with one basic one because I love pumpkin everything, pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie, pumpkin everything. So this is kind of what we're going to do. Now, in the Fruitful Hover stamp, you know you get two different sized pumpkins. Uh, last year I did this one and I made a, um, it was just, it was on a white one. It had the pumpkins and hello fall. I saw another retailer at, from close closeology do it and I thought it was super cute. So, um, I made one of those, but this year we're going to do a little bit different. Okay. I'm going to get the front. I got this backwards. Um, I have a piece of paper in here. So when I'm stamping, it doesn't go through my shirt. All right, I'm going to angle the light down just a little bit more just so that we get good, good lighting for this because I want you guys to be able to see. There we go. That should be good. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is I can tell the center just based on the top of the sweatshirt. Let me bring it down into focus here. So here is the top here. So that's what I'm basing my center off. Okay, I'm going to take that back out of screen. And I'm going to use the little pumpkin this time. I think he is super cute and I don't get to use him very often. So I'm going to use him on this one. And then, good morning. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I love pumpkin everything. Now I already went ahead and put the letters on the thin mount just for time's sake. I'm going to go ahead and tell you though how I did it. Basically, um, you can see with the thin mount that they have these lines which makes it super easy to line your light, your, your letters up straight. The only way they won't be straight is if you didn't put them on correctly. <laughs> um, let me get my glasses. They, I knocked them over. <laughs> I need these so I can see. All right. So basically I pulled them off, put them on my thin mount and line them up all on this line here. I'm going to fix my T a little crooked. Now you want these to be as straight as possible. So definitely give it a once over and make sure. And I made sure that it had about the exact same spacing too. Now everything has two E's. So what I did was I just left off the first E because that'll be the easiest way for me to go back and put the other E right on the end. Um, 
Some people will buy two fonts of the same thing so they have more than one letter because they only come with one each, but um, these are stamps. These are from the, um, I think the typesetting one. So these are just stamps. See, they just come off. Oops, let me put it over the camera. I just have them on here ready to go. They are, Iron Orchid Designs has a plethora of stamps, different letters. This is just one out of three different fonts we're going to use today. So again, when you have more than one letter in your word, like I have two E's, I'm just leaving this one off so I can put that one on the end and it'll be simple. Now, when I put them on, you put them on backwards. So you start here, so it'd be E, V, E, R. So you're going to read it this way. So when you go to stamp it, oh, you're welcome. It'll read straight across. So it's going to say, it's going to be pumpkin, everything. Now you can see that some of my letters are white, some of them are black, and that's just residue left over from, I've used these letters several times. And um, sometimes they've gotten a good cleaning and sometimes I'm not so much cleaning, but they, they still work with even a little bit of ink on them. So now this is how I center my letters. I count how many total letters there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the middle would be between five, five on one side, five on the other side. And, and actually on this thin mount I have, there's a blue line that shows me. Um, it didn't quite fit. So I know though, it's going to be between the Y and the T. So I'm going to line that up in the center with the pumpkin to the top of the sweatshirt. We are going to start with the pumpkin though first. So, um, I'm just going to make sure I smooth this out. For this one, um, like I said, I'm just going to use the black first. Now, when you're using these inks, these inks are, are fabulous. Just make sure you stir them well. If you don't stir them or shake them well, I should say, shake them well. You want to make sure that um, it's, it's shaken and then you can use it. That way it gives a good mix and good color, especially if you're using some of the colors, you definitely want to make sure you shake it well. And I'm going to use my brayer because I want to put, make sure I put enough ink on. Now I don't want to put that stamp on my sweatshirt because it could be very messy and I could take the brayer and go off and get it on my sweatshirt. So I'm going to put it on a plate just to be careful. If I had more space in my shot, I would do it off to the side, but I want to make sure it's on camera. So I'm just taking my brayer and I'm rolling it out. This is just a um, plastic or foam, I should say, uh, paper plate. Now I'm just going to roll it on my pumpkin. I'm going to go both ways, making sure I get good coverage on my baby pumpkin here. Now you'll notice that part of my brayer, part of the ink got off to the side. So I just take, have a baby wipe or a napkin. Um, yes, it will be washable after I get done. I'm just going to heat set it with my, um, I have a heat press. You can use an iron, but yes, definitely. Um, that was this question here. Yes, Belinda, it will be able to be washable. Okay. So I'm just going to wipe off this extra here because I don't want to have smudges or mess on my shirt. And I also make sure I don't have any of my fingers. So now I'm going to pick it up. Now, once you decide where you are going to put your stamp, you need to commit to it and push it on. So I'm looking at the center and I'm going right here. Now I'm going to give it a nice firm press because it's fabric and I want the ink to soak in, making sure that I'm not moving my stamp so I don't get a um, smudge. If the ink was a little thicker in certain areas, I could get a smudge, but I'm okay with that because this is, this is handmade, homemade. So ta-da, there's my pumpkin. Look how vibrant that looks. Even though it's just the black, you can see all the detail. These pumpkins are incredible. Okay. So now I'm done with my pumpkin stamp. If you can't wash it right away, just take your baby wipe and just get the excess ink off real quick. And then you could set it to the side to a chance you get to wash it. All right. Now we're going to do the word everything. 
Now I'm going to have to do this one off to the side because I don't want to risk getting on my shirt and it won't fit in that paper plate. So let me just go to the side here. I'm going to pull the sleeve up so I don't get it on there. <laughs> I'm one of those messy crafters. I, I tend to get <laughs> uh, paint or ink everywhere. So I'm going one way first and then I'm going to go the other way. Again, I can't show you on the camera because my shirt is in the way. All right. I will bring it up here and I want to show you with the brayer. I did get some, look at, I got some areas where the brayer hit the sides. I want to make sure I wipe that off first because knowing me, I'll get it smooshed on the, the sweatshirt and I don't want to have any blemishes on there. So I'm just going to get the extra off really quick. Again, it might not be perfect, but that's okay. All right, so now I am ready to stamp. I'm gonna stand up for this just so I can eyeball where it needs to go. Could I have measured it all out? Absolutely, but I don't really generally do that. <laughs> now I, I need to make sure that the Y and the T are in the center under the pumpkin. And once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna commit, put it down, and then give it a nice press making sure to go over all the letters. Now, again, I have to come back and put the E, but because the fonts, they only come with one of each, but I can do that after I get this on. All right, let me pull it up and <laughs> let's hope. Yes, woo! Okay, so pumpkin Vera thing. <laughs> just kidding. We're going to go back now and I'm just going to put the E on. So I'm just going to take that off and just put it on a smaller thin mount. Again, you can cut these apart using whatever size you want. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put a little bit more ink on it just so it matches the same intensity of the other letters. And now I just want to really kind of line it up to make sure that it's going to be straight because this E not being straight will not be a good thing. It will be very visible. All right. So I'm going to just take my time and make sure once I find where it needs to go, I'm going to push it down and pull it up. Ta-da! Yes. All right. I love the way that came out. Let me put this to the side. So now I have a cozy little sweatshirt for the fall that says pumpkin everything. Now, this will take a few minutes to dry. Once it's dried, I'm gonna heat press it and it will make sure that the heat, the heat will keep the fat, uh, excuse me, let me slow down. The heat will make the ink set into the fabric and you can wash it. So let me just hold it up. I'm gonna switch back to the big camera and so I can show you, hold it up and you can take a peek at what it looks like. Ta -da! So pumpkin everything. Now how cute will this be during the fall when the fall leaves are falling and you're out for a nice stroll? Ta -da! Okay, so that's the first one. Now we're going to get a little adventurous and do some mixing of colors. All right. This one is nice. white. Now I have to be very careful because white, <laughs> well, white will tend to show a lot more, especially if I make a mistake. So I'm going to be very careful with this and make sure I don't have any extra ink, the black ink around here. So thank you, Belinda. I appreciate that. Oh, so if you know anybody that loves fall as much as I do, make sure you share this video with them or tag them in it because these sweatshirts are super easy to make. You could make a long sleeve t-shirt or just a t-shirt, but, um, you can make them so unique with between the pumpkins, they have fall leaves and their acorns. So um, speaking of fall leaves, that's what we're going to do next. So in the Fruitful Harvest stamp, there are some really cute flowers, flowers, <laughs> leaves. I'm sorry. I am getting ready to go out of town in about two hours. I'm going on the longest garage sale and, um, my mind is spinning to make sure that I have everything packed at home because I, I can't, we're flying, we're not driving there. So I have to make sure I bring everything with me. 
So my mind is a little preoccupied. So if I mess up with my word, in, I apologize. But um, I didn't want to miss this opportunity to do these sweatshirts though because they're super, super cute and anybody can do them. You can even do this with your grandkids or your kids or um, your siblings, your parents, whatever. These are just adorable. Okay, let me go back to the screen and show you. All right, so here is my white sweatshirt. Now for this one, I'm gonna use the retro stamp. That's the big ones that just have the outline. Let me take this F off so you can see it better. No, how's that? There we go, can you see that? So this F, all you're gonna do is get the outline. And again, I have already taken it off. Let me just show you how I do it. Here's my thin mount. And I always wanna start here and work that way. So I'm an F and I'm gonna line it up right on that bottom line. Then I have my A, again on the bottom line. Using a thin mount and putting all your words will help make your letters so much straighter. Will they be perfect? No, but they'll look perfect. Oh, Nancy, I am starting. We're flying to Cincinnati and then we're heading south. We have a U-Haul truck and we're going to go through Kentucky and Tennessee. And then generally by the time we hit Georgia, our truck is full and we just come straight home which is about a 12 hour drive, but it's worth it because we're going to find all kinds of treasures. Is there anybody else out there that goes on the longest yard tail? It runs from Alabama all the way down to, or excuse me, all the way up to Michigan. It's actually August 4th to the 7th, but we've learned if you go a few days early, they generally set up about a week early and you can find some, some really cool items that normally would be gone by the time you get there. So all right, let me show you my prototype. I was playing on the computer, and what I want to do is I want to do fall, y'all, and then have some leaves around it. So we are going to make an orange because you there is no orange. There's a tomato, which is a red, and a turmeric, which is yellow. So we're going to create some more colors. We're going to use this as the retro stamp. And then down here at fall, y'all, um, is going to be, I think it's the... I have the uh, lowercase of the type setting font. All right, so let's get started. Again, I have to stamp twice because this one only went out. So I put my placeholder here so I know exactly where it goes. And this time though, we're gonna use stone, which is more of a fall color than, is, than the black. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And um, kind of try to wa um, wipe off my brayer real quick. I do have two brayers. Maybe I'll just use the other one. <sighs> this ink can be very messy. <laughs> oh, and so I will be documenting my whole trip. Um, we're both on TikTok and Instagram. So if you're interested in the longest yard tail and learning what it's about or what we find, look me up on TikTok or Instagram and it'll like be in my stories and stuff. All right, so let's use the stone. I'm gonna give it a good shake. I always wanna make sure you shake, shake, shake your ink. All right, putting some on a paper or a foam plate. Wow. I want to be really, really careful about keeping my fingers clean because this one is white. So I'm going to do a lot of finger wiping because I've already got lots of ink on me. Get my big cloth too. Okay, so same thing here. I know the center from the top of my sweatshirt and there's four letters. So I know between the A and the L is where the center is on this. All right, let's see. Now, I don't want to ink up here, so I'm gonna ink to the side, so just bear with me while it's off to the side. Um, I'm gonna get my other brayer. Now stick around, because next we're gonna be doing some leaves on here, and I'm gonna show you how to mix colors and how to stamp and have kind of like a uh, ombre, ombre look. All right, so let's get this 
rolling. So I'm putting the stone color ink on my letters, making sure I don't get any on <laughs> this white sweatshirt. I'm going both directions. And I like to use the brayer because I feel that the brayer tends to give a little bit more ink on your stamps. And definitely when you're doing fabric, you want to make sure you have enough ink. I'm going to go back because I, you can see where the brayer hit the thin mat where there wasn't a letter. So I'm going to wipe that off real quick. And if for some reason I get a little of the stone ink around the sweatshirt, I'll probably can just mask it with like, I can stamp an acorn or something over it. There's always a way to fix it. So never, never be, feel defeated if you made a mistake because you can always fix it. Okay, so now I'm going to stand up and kind of decide where I'm going to put my fall. I'm going to stamp it right here. It's on. It's committed. I don't want to move it. I just want to simply press my letters, get the ink into the fabric. Yes, it is under Insta, uh, Pick and Boots Vintage, my Insta. And I'm sure stuff will be on Facebook too. So whatever media, whatever social media you're on, I'll put it on there. Okay, so let me pick it up and let's see how it worked. Yes, awesome. Okay, now I need to go back and just do my L. So I'm going to take um, that little, here it is. I'm going to use a different thin mount just because there's a little bit of ink on this one. So I'm going to stick that to the side. I'm going to do my L. So let me ink that up real quick. I want to make sure it has a, a, about the exact same amount of ink that I had on the first time I stamped the other letters. Let me just get the extra off. You can see right here that there's a little, let me move my finger. There's a little bit of a dot by that L and on the other side. So I want to make sure I get that because that will show. See here, I had that on the F, so it's a little, um, you can you can just see where it was. So you want to be conscious of that. You don't want, if you can catch it before you stamp, you want to make sure you get that off of there. It doesn't look bad, but, and you can see I have a couple more over here, but which is fine. All right, so let me line up my L and then commit and push it down. There we go, fall. Now I could take some chalk paint, water it down and paint it in there because you know, as you know, if you're a chalk painter, you know chalk paint does not come out of your clothes. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm going to move my ink as far away from this white sweatshirt as possible so I don't get it on there. Um, with the Fruitful Harvest stamp, there are um, some leaves. There's a maple leaf, an oak leaf, and the one that I'm not really sure what it's called. Um, they're thin mounts. You can get thin mounts from your local retailer for IOD, or you can find a retailer online and they will send them to you. They are approximately, what, I think 12 by 16? All right. Now these are just from the fall harvest or fruitful harvest stamp and I just left them on here. I just cut them apart. All right, so I'm going to put one up here, one down here, and then this crazy one over here. And I'm gonna do different colors because I'm gonna do it like my prototype, which is here. So first thing I need to do is I'm gonna mix. I'm going to get an orange. I want to get a nice orange color and I want to make sure that I make enough because I'll use this orange when I use some more pumpkins. I know I'll be making more of these and I'll be doing a pumpkin patch or something. So I want some orange. So IOD, you can get these little mixing bottles. These are fabulous because they have all the colors you need to make whatever color you want. So if you want orange, red and yellow. And, um, if you want purple, I think that's red and blue. 
but there are different tricks that you can do. You can just look them up online if you need to know what color makes what. So I've been playing and I'm going to, to make the orange. I use a little bit of the tomato and then I double up in the turmeric, which is the yellow. So, but I want to do it. Um, let me have this move the sweatshirt for the, mm, I want to show you. So let me, oh, here, I'll put this little, I'll put this over it. So if I splash, it'll be on the cardboard. Okay. So just shake it up really good. Oh, yeah, you know what? I want to go to Mich um, Ohio and Indiana for sure. That might be next year. This is my fourth year going, but um, Florida is such a long state. When you're driving back to U-Haul, <laughs> it takes forever. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Here's the, this is the tomato. I'm going to squeeze some in here. One, two, three squeezes. Okay, that was three squeezes of the tomato. Now I'm gonna do the turmeric, which is the yellowish. Shake this one really good. So if I put three of the red in, I'm gonna do six of the yellow, just because that's the color, the color that I'm looking for. I, I play with ink, so I know kind of the one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so these new mixing bottles, these empty bottles, they also, if you notice, it doesn't have the top, but it does come in the container. So they are in here. You just pull it out, and I'm going to go ahead and stick it in now, just so when I'm shaking it, it snaps right in. There you go. See, it snaps right in. So when I'm shaking it, I don't have to worry about it getting all over the lid and stuff. So I'm going to close it up and I'm going to give it a shake. Now there's not that much in there, so it shouldn't take that much to get it all mixed up. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the color difference. I'm going to show you what the red looks like. Tomato, the turmeric, here's the turmeric. I'll, I'll um, put, run a brush through it just so you can see. Here's the tomato. And then here is the color that we just made. Now, it kind of, they all kind of look the same right now, but let me just take my brush and show you. So this is the, that's the turmeric, which is like the yellowish. Oh, let me have a different brush. Here's the tomato, the red. And then finally, the color that we just made. So we have an orange. So we have orange, red, and yellow. If this orange was too dark, I can just take a little bit of the mixing white and lighten it up a little bit. We were lucky with our U-Haul. We ordered, we res, uh, reserved it last year. So it is about one third of the price of what it is. Cause we looked to upgrade <laughs> to get a bigger truck and that was ridiculously priced, but even the same size was like three times expensive. So I'm so thankful that we, or that Judy <laughs> went ahead and booked it last year. All right. So we are going to do this leaf first. So this one is, orange and a little bit of red. So I'm going to just do, I'm going to take my paintbrush and paint it on, but I want to use, I'm going to do kind of like a mixture. So there'll be some oranges, there'll be red in here, and I'll show you how to do that. Actually, I'm going to do it right over. I'm just so nervous about getting it on this white sweatshirt. I just know me and I'm kind of, yeah, I better do it over here. <laughs> I'm going to just squish, squish out a little bit more of the orange. And I'm going to grab my leaf. Before I put it on, I'll show you. Actually, here. So I'm putting on... There's the orange. Actually, you know what? I'll just do this like this so you can see. I'll, I really need you to see. I'm putting the orange on the whole thing. And I'm just... It's just a regular paintbrush. 
I'm putting it on and I'm making sure that there is enough ink because I want it to, you know, give me a good impression. Could I have used an ink pad? Probably, but this way I know with the brush I'll get a little bit more ink than I would with the ink pad. Okay. Now I have orange over the whole entire leaf, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to touch some of the areas with some of the red just to give it a different tone. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow. And we may or we may not see a lot of the difference, but we're going to do it. I've um, done it a few times and it works pretty good, but we shall see. All right, so I'm going to move this to the side and let's go ahead and stamp our first leaf. And this one is going to go down here. Right about here. Okay, once I put it on, I'm committed. It's going to stay there. And hopefully I don't have too much ink around the outside where it's going to make a mess. Oh, that's if this is just the Iron Orchid Designs ink. They're fabulous. Ooh, okay. So you can see the different shades. Some of it's darker and some of it's orange. Perfect. All right, we're done with that leaf. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a brighter red leaf. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna get my little plate back and let's grab the tomato. And I'm just gonna use just tomato on here. And I'm gonna, this is the maple leaf. So I'm gonna use the maple leaf and I'm just going to Kind of brush it on with my little paintbrush here. And I'm going to use a little bit of stone just because I want to have a little bit of dimension. So let me grab some of the stone from this plate and I'm just going to touch it in a few places. Because leaves are not always all one color. Sometimes they're a little bit brown, a little bit red, a little bit orange. All right, so I have that ready. Let me stick this to the side again. I have a little bit of ink, so I just want to make sure I get that off. And I don't want... All right, so now this one is going to go up here. Once it's on, it's committed. It's, it's where it's going to go. Stick that on. And there we go. So you can see that this leaf is a little bit darker. It's a darker red. Then this one's orange with a little bit of red in there. So now what we need is a green one. So let's do that one real quick. I don't have any green ink out yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And this is the green. It's called New Grass. So I'm give it a good shake. And I put the new grass on the plate. Oh, we can't see that. New grass on the plate. But I'm also going to... I do have a live schedule. Thanks, Cheryl. I am on the first and third Monday at noon. You can always catch me on the replay. Um, and that is tentative until they tell me that they don't need me anymore. So, um, but the first and third Monday at noon Eastern time. Okay. Okay, my final leaf. Let me get a clean brush here. And I'm going to start with the... Oh, this one's not a good brush. I'm going to start with brushing some green on. It's a pretty color. This leaf doesn't quite have as many lines as the other one, but still it's really pretty. That's one amazing thing about all of the Iron Orchid design products, everything has such amazing detail. 
especially the newer molds, like the horse and hound, that dog or the hound, great detail. Okay, so I have the green on here. Now I'm gonna go back and just put a few things of yellow. Let me see, where's my yellow brush? Or my turmeric? Is this the one? I think that's it. So I'm gonna mix in some yellow here. Just in a few uh, different places. Just for a little variance. All right, so that is done. So there is green, or the new grass color, and then the yellow, which is the turmeric. I'm gonna set that to the side. I'm going to give it a once over, make sure I don't have any wandering ink anywhere. <laughs> and I'm going to put this one over here. Mm, right about there. There we go. All right, let's take a peek. Ooh. So you can see here that there are couple of tones. We have the green with the yellow and even because the green and the yellow made a little bit of a light brown. So that is looking good. Now, again, if you don't like the way these look, like if you think that's too boring, get some watered down chalk paint and you can paint it in. I've tried to paint with these, um, these paints. I don't, they don't work that well for me because sometimes I put it on too thick and it doesn't smooth out very well, but the chalk paint does really good. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is we need to put y'all on here. Fall y'all. More of a southern saying, but it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. So I have, you see that? Let's see. I already have these ones on here. This is a fun font. This is from um, the farmhand, the lowercase. No, the typesetting, typesetting. Um, so I have y'all and I found an apostrophe. Um, it was from an older font. So even if you don't have one, you can just put it in with your paintbrush. So again, one L. So I have to come back and do that one. But let me just make sure it is lined up. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be straight-ish. All right, so let's see. I have already used green, the new grass color, and the red, the tomato. Turmeric, I guess, and this is stone. So let's do this black so it sticks out a little bit different. So I already have that inked up here. Oh, let me grab it. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> oh, these inks can be very messy um, if you're a messy crafter like I am. Some people are really neat and orderly. That would not be me. <laughs> but I do love creating so sometimes things get a little messy like this look at my hand <laughs> i don't know how i did it but let me get that off real quick because i do not want that anywhere near my white sweatshirt because i plan on wearing that and i'll probably bring the pumpkin everything one on the trip i have to make sure i pack that one for because um, I looked at the weather in Kentucky. Oh gosh, I'm sorry for anyone who lives in Kentucky and is dealing with that flooding. Um, but it was like in the high 60s, I believe, or low 70s at night. So for all you guys, LOL. Yeah, that's true, you guys. I'm from up north, so I say you guys a lot, but there are a lot of people down here that say y'all, so it just kind of rhymes. So that's why I'm going with that one but definitely you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna wipe off because I have some extra runaway ink that I do not need on here. I'm gonna wipe that off really quick. I apologize it's not on the screen, but that's purely because I don't want to get it on my sweatshirt. So let me see. I want it to be off center a little bit, but I also want it to be maybe on it just to be different. All right, so I'm gonna stick it there. And I should have enough room, yep, for the last L. All Ooh, I like it. Um, though I'm looking at the camera, you can't really see the top of it, but here I can because there is a uh, difference between the black and the stone. Um, oh, in Northern California, you say that too? Okay, that's, I didn't know that. I've never... I've been to Southern California. I've never been to Northern California. All right, let's see. Where's my last? 
Okay, so now I just need that last L. I'm just pulling in this off. I'm going to stick this on and ink it up real quick. Getting the extra smooshes out of the way. And I'm going to line it up as best as I can. Commit and push. Yay! There we go. Now, we could add more, we could add less, but I like it just the way it is right now. If I decided again, I can go back through and I can just dilute some chalk paint and I could paint in the letters, but I kind of like it like this. Um, I could actually paint in some more of the letters too, but no, this is going to be just fine for me. So let me switch the camera around. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see it. Boop, boop. So, ta-da, fall y'all. There we go. Centered up a little bit. So you guys can create whatever kind of designs that you want. It doesn't even have to be with the Fruitful Harvest stamp. You can just use um, any of the, the fonts. There are so many different stamps you can choose from. There's like the Santa face from last year's um, release. That He was super cute. You can put all kinds of things with those. And let me show you this one, last one, that we, the first one we did. Pumpkin everything. So this is probably my new favorite. 